Hello, I'm Evan Topol, Corporate Chef of Emmy Roth USA. Today I'm going to show you the safest and most effective way of breaking down a wheel of Roth Grand Cru. Uh, we are going to go through the very uh, most effective pieces of knife and cutlery to break down the wheel. The most common piece is the 12 inch chef knife. Um, that is available in any food service or retail format. Um, something that may be available to you is a larger 18 inch knife which would be referred to as a pizza knife. Um, the next option which would be excellent would be a double handled cheese knife. Um, some operations have that more common in retail. But the most effective piece, which most people do not have, is what we call a platform cutter. And it's simply a platform with a piano wire uh, on the inside and used as the cutting instrument. And what we do is we take, and with a paring knife or your chef's knife, is we lightly and carefully score the rind on top so we have a nice line to follow for our cut. We also, we're going to take and make a, a nice downward score on both sides because the rind can be rather tough. So we're going to make about a half inch cut. And what this is going to do, it's going to allow us to place the wire in place and draw it up through there and have a nice clean edge. So we'll move this in the position. Pull our wire back, place our wheel over the top. We will line up our wire into the pre-scored line. Line up the back and we do a nice, slow, even pull and the wire slides directly through the cheese, breaking our wheel in half. So what we're going to do is show you how to break it down with the chef knife because that is the most common piece of equipment. What we like to do the first cut we will be taking and scoring gently across the top face in half and we have a nice score mark to follow our cuts across. Uh, at that point we want to make sure that we do this safely and the most dangerous part of the knife is because it's so close to the size of the wheel is the chance that you will slip off the front end of the knife and, and, and injure yourself on the palm. So what we're going to do to alleviate that chance is we're going to bring the knife back, we're going to tip it up at a 45 degree angle and we're going to slowly rock the knife along the score line down through the cheese this is a very cold cheese, so you do feel some resistance, but you continually put pressure and rock, and you'll feel when it pops through on the other side. Now we'll bring the knife back up at the 45, and it'll remove fairly easily. Now we'll spin the cheese around, and we'll do the exact same motion, 45. We start to rock the knife through, bring our hand back on the back part of the knife, and easily go through and break the wheel into two pieces. So now what we have, obviously, is two half wheels of Grand Cru. So we'll set one of these aside and we'll continue breaking this down into smaller pieces. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to try and find the safest sur surface. And what the safest surface always is, is the flattest surface. So we're going to move our wheel into position to be flat and because this surface is cut it's also fairly sticky on the cutting board. So we can move it in a position like that. We're going to eyeball and break the wheel in half and we're going to make a simple and smooth rocking motion right down through the center of this half wheel. That's going to provide us with quarters. We move from a half to quarter cuts. So from the quarter cut, there are several different options. The first option we're going to do, now we are not able to actually cut on a flat surface anymore. So we have to be very careful 
about the movement of the wheel. But we're going to take the very same um, we're going to take the very same procedure. And we're going to put our knife at a 45. We're going to indent it in the tip, and we're going to rock back and forth, straight down, having our knife following the very tip of the quarter wheel, and we're going to break this quarter into eighths. From that point, we can do two different cuts. One cut we call the cake cut, one cut we call the pie cut. First, we'll do the, the cake cut. Again, because of its motion, we have a couple options. Now that we're getting smaller, we can take a clean towel, place it on the cutting board. This keeps our piece of cheese from tipping or sliding around as we're trying to cut it. Again, we'll line up to the tip of the cheese, the knife, 45 degree angle. We will indent with a little slicing motion. And again, we'll motion, rock back and forth, down through the length of the cheese. Now, at this point from the quarter, you can break it into four more pieces or three pieces, depending on the size that you would like. So what I did is I broke it into three pieces and it's going to provide roughly a 10 ounce piece which we call a cake cut because of its size looking like a stacked layered cake. Those are our cake cuts. And the other cut we're going to show is the pie cut. The pie cut can be very similar but at this point we're able to lay it down on a flat surface which is the safest surface to cut on. We're going to break this piece into a half. Again, using the rocking motion, slowly and evenly. And you notice how I have watching my palm from the point of the knife. That's why we're using the longer knife. From this point, we can again set them down to the largest flat surface. And we will break this into thirds once, twice. And we have what we call a pie cut, because obviously it's shape of a pie. Now we're going to go through a very simple process of breaking down the primal cuts into single service applications. Uh, the single serve applications would be good for catering, banquets, appetizers, cheese course plates. So we're going to do that very simply and easily by taking the primal cuts and breaking them down. Our first cut is going to be a diamond shaped cut. And to do that, we are going to break this eighth cut wheel into a sixteenth. And what that does for us is it gives us a nice point, a point at a 45 and I'll show you how to gather that 45. So what we're going to do is take a parallel cut about a half inch in. Again rocking the knife straight down through and what it gives us is a straight line with a 45 degree angle. We're going to very carefully trim very little of the rind off and we're going to place the knife at a 45 to the original piece of cheese, move in one half inch, keeping that 45 degree angle, and cutting. Again at a half inch, and one more time. And what that gives us is this diamond shape. And at that point, we can take the diamond shape, lay it down, make our half inch cuts across, and it results in half inch by half inch by half inch diamond shapes, which is a very unique way to use a wheel product because the wheel product, when you cut it, has lots of nice angles and lots of nice shape. It's a very fun way to do that. Uh, it's much harder to do that out of a square piece, so take advantage of the round shape of this wheel. The other option that we have is we can do a stick. We can do a short stick or a long stick. Uh, again, we will move a half inch in, make it about a half inch thick. Cut. This time, we're going to leave the rind. What we're going to do is we're going to trim up the end nice and square. We're going to move a half inch in, 
make our sticks. And we're going to leave the rind for two reasons. We're going to be able to show them that this is a washed rind product. And it also serves as a serving instrument, knowing which end to grab. And you can eat up into the rind. So it makes a very nice display. It's very interesting. It gives very much the history and detail of how the cheese was produced. And it gives you a different look and tone on the plate when you're doing that sort of uh, presentation. The last shape we'll, we'll show is a simple square, which would be called a cube. We can do them a larger, smaller. We're going to stay with the same size, roughly a half inch. We're going to barely trim off the nice rind, unfortunately. And we're simply going to make half inch cubes, cutting in each direction, moving the knife a half inch. And we have our cheese cubes. Let's talk a little bit about portion control and portion size. Um, now that we've just cut up and we've made the different shapes uh, available for use for catering and cheese plates and such, um, normal portion size would range between a half an ounce and three quarters of an ounce per piece of cheese. Something like this a little larger would probably be in the three quarter ounce range. Something like this a little smaller and these two would be in the half ounce range. Normally on a catered event uh, with a long event with many other options of food, you'd probably serve between an ounce and an ounce and a half per person. On a smaller event that cheese is maybe more the focus, you would bump that up to approximately two to two and a half ounces per person. Let's take a moment and go over how to properly store the product we just cut up. The con most convenient and easiest thing would probably be plastic wrap. It's easy to use and readily available. For larger pieces of cheese, you could consider using wax paper or parchment paper. However, we do not recommend that you use a vac seal on this wash rind cheese as it will suffocate the product. Let's take a look at how to wrap a larger piece such as this. We're going to pull out a large piece of plastic wrap, place the cheese in the center, and carefully wrap each side, pulling the plastic wrap tightly. And then we're going to want to seal out as much air, smoothing it out with our hand, as we possibly can. And what we want to do, again, is we're going to take another piece. We're going to put the piece of cheese in a different direction. And we're going to completely wrap it a second time. This serves two purposes. One, it does not let refrigerator smells penetrate your cheese. And two, it does not let the cheese aroma penetrate your refrigerator. Now this type, this cheese would be able to be stored for a couple weeks. And the best spot would be in a very cold corner of your refrigerator. Mm -hmm.